Let's talk about jar files. If you've worked with Java for some time, you would have encountered these files quite often. It is a standard and widely used format that is used to export executable Java code. So if you have a bunch of Java files and you want to execute them somewhere other than your computer, like a server or someone else's computer, then you probably need to create and export a jar file in order to run it. But what exactly is a jar file? And how is it actually made? And also, why is it so useful? I'll cover all of this and also talk about some common operations that can help you run and debug your jar files in production. Okay, so let's take a look at some sample code first. I have this very simple application opened here in Eclipse. So here we have two classes. We have app.java and speaker.java. The app class contains our main method and within the main method, we call the speaker.sayhello method. So if we look at the speaker class over here, it's just a simple class with a static method. That's the one we called in the app class. And this just prints hello world. So this is just a slightly more complex hello world program. If we run this code, we can see that hello world is printed as expected. Now, if you want to run the code outside of Eclipse, we can export this into a jar file. So if I click export here, I can export it as a runnable jar file. So here I've just specified the location for the jar file and I'll choose all the default options. Now we can see the jar file here in our sample workspace. Now that we've exported the jar file, we can use the Java command to run it on our terminal. So as you can see, when I run it from the terminal, it prints hello world to the console. So the first thing to note is that a jar file is actually just a zip file. In fact, we can use our regular unzipping tools to extract all the files which are present within the jar file. Let's do that now. If you're on a Mac or Linux machine, you can use the unzip command to do this. So when we run this unzip command, it extracts all the files within the sample1.jar file into the result folder. So let's inspect each of these files one by one. So these are just the compiled class files which were compiled from our Java code. These files will contain the bytecode, which is the lower level Java code that runs on the JVM. If you're curious about the details about how these class files are compiled and how they run Java on the JVM, you can see my other video which I've linked here. But in short, for every Java file that you have, it gets compiled into a class file. And all of these class files are then bundled into this jar file. The module info.class file here just gives some extra information about the module and how it interacts with other modules. But this file was created by Eclipse and it's not necessary to run a jar file. So you can ignore it for now. Now we have all these class files, but in order to make a jar file that can actually run, we need to specify some additional information. So for example, which class do we look at for the main method, which is the entry point into our application. This information is provided by the manifest file, which is within this folder here. There are some other options and configurations available, but in essence, this is basically what a jar file is. The best way to interact with jar files is to use the jar command, which comes installed when you install Java. You can use the help command here to see all the commands and options available. So for example, we can create a jar file on our own by specifying the compiled class files that we want included. And we can create a runnable jar file by specifying the main class as a command option. But normally your editor or build tool like Maven will take care of this. So you don't really have to worry about that unless you want to do some low level operations. But if you are curious on the topic, I have made another video on how to use the Maven build tool to create jar files. This command is useful for debugging though. For example, you can use the jar tvf command to get a quick view of the contents of our jar file. And we can use the jar xf command to extract individual files from our jar file. For example, if we only want to view the contents of the manifest, we can only extract that file. This is especially useful with large jar files where unzipping or extracting all the files is an expensive operation. So that about wraps it up for this video. I hope it was helpful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.